Now we dive into the implementation of the graph. First we will have a look at the abstract design and then we see how we could implement this in C. What do we need to store the information of a graph? First of all we need to store information about the vertices and then we have to store the edges which means the connectivity or the relationship between the different vertices. Lastly if the graph is weighted we may want to store the values for the vertices and the edges. So how can we store such values? Well, it's easy, we just use an array and we enumerate uh, all the nodes from 0 to n minus 1 if we have a graph that consists of n many, or in this case, five, uh, 6 vertices. So for storing the edges, we have two popular choices. One is the so-called adjacency list, which means we store for each vertex the outgoing edges. So here we have on vertex 0, we have two outgoing edges. We have outgoing edges to 1 and to 2. So we store this in the list, this information that we approach those two elements. And in this case we can also store the weight directly. So we store here the information from 0, we go to 1, the weight is 3. From 0 we go to 2, the weight is 5. So that's good if you have a very um, sparse graph, but there is another representation that is quite popular and easy to see. It's the so-called adjacency matrix. It is a 2D array of all possible combinations between u and v, so between two vertices. So the same directed graph that we see here can be represented in the adjacency matrix as shown here. So from node 0 we can go to node 1 with a weight of 3, from node 0 we can go to node 2 with a weight of 5 similar for all the other nodes. You can see already you can see already that this matrix is very sparsely populated. There are only few entries in this little graph. So how can we now implement this in C? Let's start with a D graph. That means we have in this case we have our little arrows of the edges, we have directed edges and we have here a fixed number of nodes initially given. Nodes have all our IDs and we use our adjacency matrix to store the data. So our graph data structure contains of a size which is the number of uh, vertices and we here in this case we may also store a value. Therefore we use an array of, we just use characters here, um, we knew we use this little array, so we have here for each node also a character like A for node 0, B for node 1 and so forth. And then we have this little um, Boolean two-dimensional pointers where we store the adjacency matrix. And as this is not a weighted graph, all we need to store is basically 0 or 1, so true or false. That's why we use the Boolean data type. So let's get started with the implementation of the individual functions. First what we want to do is we want to set the node value of a specific node. So we have a very lightweight implementation here where we call graph set node value. It takes a graph and a node ID and a value. All it does is basically in this array changing the character to a specific value. Then you can add an edge so you need to define u and v and then you set this value in the matrix to be true, setting basically it to 1 in a specific combination of u and v. When we initialize the graph we have to allocate again the data structure which we do here. We, s we set, we predetermine the size of the graph in terms of number of nodes which is what we said over here. The, so we need to allocate those additional data structures, one array for the node values. Then we have to allocate um, these edges. And these edges, they are now a two-dimensional data structure. So what I do, I first allocate an array for the individual rows. And after that, I initialize the rows by calling malloc again for each row in this diagram. Right. So we allocate initially this basically a set of pointers and each pointer points to one of these individual rows. There is a better way 
um, and to do this actually but i wanted to make sure that you can understand this core principle before we do a more efficient data mapping 